Howdy, gang, and welcome once again to the Duct Tape Studios. I'm Jeff McAleer, your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. Thanks for joining me again. Today, I am going to be talking with Grant Dalglish from Columbia Games as we discuss the current Kickstarter, which is looking to fund a hardcover edition of Harn World the medieval-styled fantasy role-playing game setting, which is celebrating its 40th anniversary. Pretty sweet. So we're going to talk all things Harn, as well as a few other items of interest regarding Columbia Games. So without further ado... Grant Dalglish is joining me today, and it's been a while since we have talked, and we're going to talk probably all things Columbia Games is my guess, but I know there's something that we are going to also focus on, because you've got a Kickstarter that you're in the midst of right now, and I believe you have passed the 600% funding yeah. mark last time I took yeah, a peek. So, first of all, Grant, how are you doing? doing? Well, Jeff, uh, thank you. Good to talk to you. Uh, like it's been a while. Like you said, the the last time we did speak was in person at Gen Con. Uh, and I yeah, think, I think twenty like three yeah. years ago. Four, oh yeah, f it was twenty nineteen. And right. this year, yeah, it's been a while. We're going back this year. Uh, haven't been since twenty nineteen because they canceled twenty twenty, and and uh, we didn't go in uh, the other two options so we're back though so maybe i'll see you cool i'll be awesome. i'll be there you know it's also already at my hotel and everything we're all we're all one set. of my avatar screen icons on uh, i think it's on skype it is um a picture of you and me um chatting at that at my booth uh oh, wow. where, like it's you wearing those uh head headphones and me standing there and uh I use I I don't wear head I don't wear headphones when I'm at the conventions. I do wear the baseball cap though. That's, that's kind of my stick. thing. Yes, well, it looks fun. It looks uh, like an iconic. It's I always need a haircut. That's the reality of it. That's why I wear hmm. a hat because my hair is always like all, all over. over, blowing in the wind. That's right. Yes, the luxurious locks <laughs> that are all turning gray. Oh yeah. So let's talk. Let's kick <laughs> off. By talking about sure. Harn, and uh, 2023 marks the 40th anniversary of Harn, and I know it is uh, pretty well known by some folks, and then I'm sure there are going to be people who catch this video who are absolutely clueless about Harn, Harn World, Harn Dex, oh. and, and things like yeah. that. So let's talk about uh, what's on Kickstarter right now, which is a 40th anniversary hardcover edition of Harn World, right? right? Harn World. And so, yeah, what is it? It's a, it's a fabulous question, and I can try to answer it with a, the 30-second elevator speech, um, which is... You can, you can talk a little bit longer than 30 seconds. It's we okay. start with something to capture your attention that is, uh, because there's it's a lot, actually. I could talk for a lot. But just to uh, tell you what it is, it, it's a game world. It's a, a world, a fantasy world, specifically designed for gaming. So, you know, a lot of game worlds are designed out of books or movies or something, right? This one was designed for gaming, which means it was architected to include all elements, a lot of elements, diverse elements that you might need for different kinds of gaming from uh, high magic to low magic to dark or, or mm -hmm. religious campaigns or elves or dwarves or monsters or no monsters for absolutely anything. And there's a lot of plot devices and mechanics kind of built into the world, which I can explain in detail, but those are in at its broadest level, they're there to make a believable story possible. And you get to tell the story. The player enjoys your story. If you're the game master, you're telling the story. And to tell it in Harn World kind of gives you some tools to, to make it very immersive. And um, 
there's always players asking questions and wanting to know what this looks like or that looks like, and you, you're going to have the answers. So um, for 40 years, that world has existed and been developed, and it's been consistent all of that time, improved but consistent, and it's really pretty cool that we have done that, although it makes me feel a little bit old. I was going to say, because Columbia Games has been around for a, a good amount of time. I, I was just thinking earlier today that uh, Columbia Games has got to be one of the longest lasting tabletop gaming companies out there. If not, maybe the longest? Well, I don't know exactly for sure, for sure. But, yeah, I, maybe we'll issue a challenge to see who's older. Uh, because it's uh, certainly a, a while. 1972, and uh, that's 50 years plus plus one. And um, Harn was from 1983, yeah. 40 years. Um, and I'm, I'm from 1975 myself. So um, I was a kid when Harn came out. Uh, my first experience with yeah. Harn was this little thing called the Pilot's Almanac. I remember we put out a book about ships, and um, it was about navigating ships and provisioning ships. And uh, it was really cool, actually, whole mechanics about moving them around and not getting crashing into reefs and things. Um, and we played it like a game on on uh, with figures ship figures it was pretty neat but i remember that was my first experience and i also remember being tasked with building some ships uh, and it's a little bit like a character sheet for for a player in, in any kind of role playing but for a ship right and, and i was about 13 right. years old and um and wrote wrote out a bunch of the ships that came and got included in the pilot's almanac as template ships. Um, and my name's in that book, and I think that's the first time. Um, plus my young friend, Joel Burslem, and we had a great time then, and then we played, and we were uh, hooked from then on. Uh, and so I grew up with Harn, uh, and it's been part of my life forever and ever. Um, so for 40 years, and, and maybe for another 40 years. One way I always have uh, looked at Harn and would explain to people is that if someone is looking for a fantasy setting or even a non-fantasy setting, that they're looking to realistically portray a medieval world, then they ought to be taking a look yeah. at harm. You should take a look. You know, you can adopt bits of it or fall in love with it and adopt it wholesale. Uh, sometimes people start with a, a city or a region and uh, investigate it and read about it, learn about it. You can potentially take something like that and transplant it into your own world. Um, if you uh, have been developing something like that or just use a city or something in isolation. Uh, and then if it sticks and you're interested, you can go further from there. Um, it's uh, Yeah, because it can be used very absolutely. modular. Yeah, from little to, to big. Um, the the pieces are all sold separately, and so you can approach it that way, um, following a kind of a, a very logical pattern. Because the entire structure of all of the Harnick material is encyclopedic in nature. It's like a great big mm -hmm. encyclopedia and an atlas right. spread out over a whole bunch of books. And there's uh, maps galore, of course, too. Um, the, some of the more signature aspects of uh, um, what people who do know Harn know and, and praise it. but uh, And they're often still to this day when people who have not seen him for the first time are, are impressed. Even though like that map that's behind me there is the original Harn map from 1983. It's still, still awesome. Absolutely still wow. awesome. And you can see that map if you look a little closer there are hexes on it and those hexes um sort of have numbers and a grid system and we have drawn maps that allow you to see closer in right down to the contours of the hills and the locations of the manors and the trees and things it's it's really quite stunning yeah it's pretty detailed uh, high level to low level and it's neat how that's all there 
Uh, so that you, again, for the purposes of using it, it's it's there to spell out a story that feels real, because things like the stars in the sky, there's constellations up there, and the constellations actually have meaning, right? There, there's a the whole concept of that that built in to Harn, um, and that's like a zodiac in in terms of a simple transliteration to to common sense. But you know that being built into Harn means that you got some storytelling there alone and people identifying with a certain uh, sun sign, as we call them, would um, perhaps have character traits associated with that. It's a whole avenue to follow. Um, and all of that is just one little thing, right? Um, that's the stars, right? Mm -hmm. So there's things like um, a real world here being described and presented I can start and talk about like the biggest details like like I look at stars one particular star is the star that sure. um, this planet Kathira orbits around and we have a little bit of information about that star and the planet and the other planets in the system and then the planet itself um, is actually deliberately designed remember the concept of design for gaming and um, and so some choices were made, which I think are, are fascinating, you know, to think about how they were made early on and how important they are, but uh, clever and yet simple. Uh, for example, it's it's kind of an Earth-like planet. It's about the same size as Earth. Um, it's got three continents, a bit like Earth, uh, that look a little bit Earth-like. Um, Harn is the place on this planet that has been the most detailed, but... Um, we actually have a lot of detail about a lot more of it. Harn itself is sort of analogous to Britain on a big map where mm -hmm. um, in terms of its geography, latitude, longitude, weather, and we have maps of this stuff. We have maps of the weather and the oceans and currents, even the plate. Yeah, even the plate. Oh, yeah, I know. It's, 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 it, there's, it's just it's amazing right. how much detail is in Harn. And it's important to also point out yeah. that it's system agnostic. So it can be utilized with anything. So if somebody's playing fifth edition or if they're playing an OSR rule sure. set or uh, Pathfinder second edition, what, what have you, they could yeah. utilize either Arn. a little bit or in, uh, in total, you can use iron completely from that stance. It's, uh, it's supportive of not only any system, but also any style um it can be an absolutely uh high magic uh power campaign where Harn does have the reputation amongst those who know it and those who have have uh, uh read it and how it's kind of presented it's relatively gritty realistic um yeah. and and magic yeah. is rarely discussed um but magic rare is a good term actually to describe Harn uh because it's it's there there are wizards. There's a concept of a guild of the Shek Pavar, which is Harnik for a wizard, and they exist and they are potentially very powerful and, and scattered around throughout Harn and other parts of this whole planet with a system uh, of chantries, which are where they might hang out in safety. Um, mm -hmm. And a bit of a system to police themselves, because if they go too wild and renegade, um, that's what happens. They're declared renegade and then perhaps even hunted down by their other peers. So I've played a game where that exact thing happened. And we were high level wizards as players. We were tasked with hunting down this other wizard. And we were moving around the whole place with um, with high magic adventure stuff going on and that could be one extreme and at the other extreme you could have a, a entire campaign where magic maybe never crossed anyone's path um but um the world i've always felt that that harn captures the fantasy literature of say the 60s and 70s quite okay. well that, well, the reason being is that if you look at the works of, like, say, Fritz Leiber, 
or um, Jack Vance, which, of course, we know Jack Vance's work inspired you know, Dungeons and Dragons tremendously. It inspired the entire magic system for it. But you don't have where everybody's tripping over magic items and magic users and monsters and things like that, that there, there is a wonder element to it where it's like, it's not a dragon, it's the dragon. And that's how I've always felt Harn kind of comes across at least. That's very well said, actually. The dragon is very, very well said. And, and so there's room to play it how you want. We, we believe probably, and, and it comes across in the way it's written that, Monster rare and magic rare and gritty is is what we want, but there is absolutely room to amp that up to any level desired to to all the way to of the course. extreme, um, and also to bring it back down again, which is another nice touch again that came from designing the world for gaming. Um, an example: there's a a monster factory on Han, and it's like that's a kind of a colloquial term for it but there's a place it's yeah. called arachakali and the god ilvir resides there and he experiments and makes creatures we call them ivashu and they can be absolutely anything that you can think of and we have detailed a whole bunch of them and ivashu have only like uh kind of a couple things in common that are important is they um when they're killed or die their souls go back to the central uh, to, to the god and then are recycled and they can't breed that's a built-in control so okay. of course you can change that if you really want but the idea is they of course they, right i'm the game master i can do whatever the hell i want in you this can do world any such things but you do have a, <laughs> a, a a tool to grow it or bring it back to, to earth so to speak uh, and sure. that's sort of similar level of, of control does exist in almost everything. Religion is another thing that's pretty fascinating to, to talk about that is it's spelled out in Harm World and it's pervasive throughout Harn as a very important factor. It's a, think of it though m more like bishops and abbeys of the Middle Ages of Earth. Mm -hmm. they're, they're real people. Right with real agendas in, in, in politics and life and making money and, and saving the flock. Uh, and that. I noticed how you mentioned I that did, last. I did, uh, <laughs> kind of the, Power and making money and, oh yeah, yeah. Right, saving souls right. too, I guess. And they're built into to Harnick society in that way because uh, some of the details that are provided about places include the names and the um, lineages of kings and, and earls and, and bishops and how they may interact with each other or compete with each other. And all of this is all set up in a variety of different areas. Uh, there's a feudal kingdom of Kaldor and another feudal kingdom uh, called Kande. And, uh, but nearby to that is a republic. And it's, it's a kind of quasi-Roman republic that used to be an empire and then sort of de devolved evolved into a republic and it so there's a senate and patrician class uh, patronage the concept um and it's right next door to the feudal kingdom and then another feudal kingdom creating a little trifecta in that area has only recently been founded it's um, a bit of a wild place where where kings are routinely murdered and um there's also a theocratic church that's quite powerful in there. And so all of these kingdoms are at odds with each other. Uh, there's been wars in the history that we write about. And when we kind of have this all set up, and there's a very deliberate decision made again also way back at the beginning of the product line, is that we write a history up until the year 720 in Harn, and then we stop. And we never go forward. It's a rule, and sometimes you're tempted, but it's a rule because the idea is you get to go forward, right? You, your story right. 
takes the world and all the setups and whichever story you want and you tell it and and you can count on me not contradicting you and that's right that's, it's a promise that we make uh, now am i correct that in the 40 years that harn has been around there have been around oh 150 releases i would for say it. That's a, is is that number easily, correct yeah there's a stunning amount of stuff. Okay. There's a stunning amount of uh, of information, and we keep adding to it as we can, and it's a wonderful process. The team of people that are passionate about it, uh, contributing all the time, uh, sort of it's accelerating a little bit, um, and I'm delighted to be here doing this with like this 40 year anniversary is obviously a testament to that. Mm -hmm. cool. um, Sure. And uh, it's it gets improved over time. There's been, for example, a lot more color added to Harn World. If you have Harn World from 1983 or even 1990, we're uh, looking at yeah grayscale. So it, it's a beautiful full right. color presentation now. It's also in in hardback, which is kind of much sought after, and and it's it deserves that treatment. Uh, I'm pleased to be able to do that um, efficiently in Kickstarter is the way that that's possible. So, uh, you know, there's an, another okay. nudge over in that direction, folks. Um, it, it, it's an awesome thing that we've been able to keep it um, going all these years and going and growing and abiding by the consistent kind of uh, mission statement to develop it, always respecting what's been said before. And in theory, it's like a sure. it's like a research project when you're writing something to check that you haven't violated what's been said. Uh, but um, that's that's part of the fun. Uh, you're still sitting on what third edition? Is that is that the edition you're still considered? Harm World officially would be considered third edition. That's correct. And, um, that's what I thought. It's. Uh, the colors and the improvements to that might make it like a three and a half or something, but it's uh, sure, certainly right, the hardcover right. format. But right, the, the um, third edition from version one was 1983, and version two was 1990, and version three was just a couple of years ago. And this is a new printing of that, um, and uh, right. including also some extra stuff we're, we're bundling into this articles um, or chapters about the continent adjacent to Harn and the entire planet, Lithia and Kathira, respectively. Um, and they do add a little bit more context. They were just touched on in Harn World, and now you can have a little more uh, in this main book. Um, so I'm really pleased with that. And this this has been going well. This um, Kickstarter has been going well, like you said. Uh, yeah, you. I, last I looked, you were past six hundred percent funding, yeah. so so that's pretty. It's pretty sweet. good. Yeah, it shows that, that people really want this book in this format, and I'm happy to be able to deliver it. Um, it. Yeah, you have a very loyal uh, community. I I know that for a fact. Yeah, it's it's fun too. The people who are in the community are really in it, and it's because. Of, of two things. One one aspect is good old fashioned kind of a business customer relationship in Columbia Games. We're a family business, and we do like to talk to people and get along with people and be friendly with people. But I think also the, the that usually the, helps for sure. It's great. We meet people, and we 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 love that aspect. And 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 ultimately, I'm my business and my job is to entertain people and and make them have fun. And so that's pretty great. Uh, but another aspect that I think is even more fascinating is, is Harn itself, because, you know, to, to me and to uh, a lot of the people, Harn is very real. Like, it's there. It's, it's, we spend quite a bit of our time there. And uh, thinking about it, thinking about what might happen next or what we might do, if, where it's just so immersive that um, a lot of people – who have been playing um, or following Harn for a while are are still following, even if they aren't playing, frankly, they, they, it's 
just a part of their lives. And so we certainly welcome more people in, but be warned, it's a little bit addictive. Um, and um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's immersive and it, it'll, it'll leave you wanting more. Uh, so one thing I wanted to ask is, do you think, now I'm just kind of curious, back, wasn't it the second edition of Harn that everything was loose leaf? And it was hole punched to put like into a binder. Well, actually, uh, or was it, did third edition still have that as well? Or do you think that scares people off because they're they're so used to like you've got the Kickstarter going on right now for the the hardcover edition, which is what most gamers are used to is holding a book in their hand or or like a soft cover. Mm -hmm. But but with Harn having it, and I understand why you do it, because you've got all these various different releases that you know you're going to put into a binder or multiple binders, to be honest. So, but I've always had the impression that that, and maybe I'm wrong, but for like a casual role player who might be looking for a new fantasy setting. That they'd be like, oh wow, uh, you put it in a binder. Yeah. That that's like, didn't didn't they do that with the uh, advanced D and D at one point or second edition D and D? Well, the ar arguments, uh, pros and cons exist for sure. First impressions is what you're you're talking about, and I completely agree. Yeah, right. That's what I'm talking about. Where where somebody looks at it and they go, oh, it goes in a binder. That that's kind of like work, right? My my work goes oh. in a binder. <laughs> my school work goes in a binder it said it, it hopefully then the uh, publishing of a series of hardback books and this this is actually not the only one we've got some of the kingdoms being done um will address that very thing um once uh, once you're converted into harn i think you might find that the binders in the organization do have their merit and um but but sure there's a purpose, right? I know there's a method to the madness. Yeah, there. but we'll see. I mean, it's not just like, well, yeah, we don't want to bind things. <laughs> We're against binding. <laughs> it's not that. It's definitely not that. <laughs> no, we're pro binder. Uh, in fact, it's. Uh, but it, it, binders have their own issues. Yeah, we we have uh, problems with European binders where they have two holes, or Australian binders where they have sure, four right. holes. It's it's just. <laughs> It's a bit of a nightmare, actually. So um, maybe the hardback books will will become, uh, you know, cross the line. But there's just so much, so it's going to take a little while. And I, oh, I yeah, like to keep course. all the content available. That's another cool thing, right? Right. So much is available, kind of now or when you need it. Um, that um, don't don't you have most of your releases available in PDF? Yes, too? absolutely. That's what and I that's thought. a big part of the modern, the modern way of oh, yeah. doing role playing, and that's wonderful also uh, because it kind of fits actually with our we call them articles or, or you know chapters to the is another way to think of them uh, because they're small and not all that expensive um, and exactly what you need. Um, so that's right. where we're at. We developed it for you know over forty years. It's a moving target, right? Things have uh, almost come full circle um, though and it's really quite interesting how the book that we are putting out um, now and the, the ones that we just put out uh, on the various kingdoms we've done four out of the nine kingdoms include the, in those kingdoms we put um, a city or two and that almost harkens back to the original way Harn was published in 83, 84, 85. So it just kind of uh, shows that it's the content that matters, right? You can present it mm -hmm. however, but right, we've now figured out, I guess, uh, for um, it's, it's an, I don't know why it's new exactly, but it's new to us that we can do it this way. So we're doing it and they look great and I'm really sure. happy and I'm, 
I'm not surprised people are telling me, if, like, finally, or it's about time. And I'm uh, I simply sure. can respond sure. and say, okay, well, give me time, I'll do more. Um, and yeah, you know, when I go to Gen Con, um, we go to booth at Gen Con this year, and I'm thinking about what you said. I already, I mean, I've been thinking about the way that you spoke of it, and I, my intention is to bring the Harm World hardcover and five or six Kingdom books that I'll have by then, and some maps, mm -hmm. and that's all. I'm actually not going to confuse people there at Gen Con, because the object of Gen Con right. isn't to sell things, really. It's to introduce. Sacrilege. Games. <laughs> I would I would say maybe you could bring is it Wizard Kings isn't that your fantasy you, yes game? sure sure but um, it's the three hole punch stuff that I'm talking about um, you know, um, right 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 I was going to say geez you're not going to bring any of your fog of war games what what S sacrilege we'll see how it works out but definitely um the, the idea is to give a better first impression, right? Those books do do that. And uh, I'm, sure. that makes me forever hopeful that more people will will see it and discover it. But at the end of the day, you know, most people who really take a good look at it kind of, kind of like it. Um, you know, it doesn't always fit into their style or they can't necessarily sure. perceive how to use it. Um, but... But, but they're, they're usually impressed, impressed by, by it. it. So the actual, the yeah. bigger, the bigger factor in my life is, is just good old fashioned awareness, really. Like, there's mm -hmm. just a, there is a whole lot of people who just plain haven't heard of it, and that's n n no complaint right. per se, except like that's, that's just, that's my goal is to let more people know, shout it to the rooftops because uh, I really believe in this stuff. I think it's the coolest world there is. But I'm not trying to, you know, say it from the point of view of, um, like, uh, that I in insist that everybody use it. I just offer it, and I hope that people it's... enjoy it. So I've got another Harn question for you, though. So I know you've got the Kingdom books. Don't you have you have City books too, yeah. right? C City. Weren't, weren't there City books? And then you have some adventures. Sure. Yeah. So. We've talked kind of more like high level. Yes. And I know many gamers out there, many fantasy gamers out there, they like to pick up different adventures from, it doesn't have to be from the system that they're running because any good game master out there cribs yes, from everywhere. Exactly. Count on that. It's always been the case. So what are your adventures like? So there are uh, uh, several different types of ways that we've approached that. Uh, generally, an adventure um, is located in a place. So we take that opportunity to mm -hmm. flesh out the source material of the place uh, that the adventure right. is located at and then create the story, the, the plot, and um, perhaps um, scene by scene um, how, to, how it unfolds or may unfold in a, in a choose your own adventure type style. Um, we have a few of those products that are, you might call canned adventures. Um, and yeah. um, I refer people to something like Trowbridge Inn um, or um, Field of Daisies. Um, the, that's uh, their murder mysteries, both of those. Uh, and uh, okay. I didn't, didn't do, do it. it. Yeah. Which um, we'll we'll build a case and we'll see. But uh, right. we have a few of those, and there are uh, one that's set that has to do with religious conflict and and hysteria and people blaming people for wild things happening. Um, and oh, that's got no basis in reality. None. <laughs> none. none. Uh, and then there's just a ton of littler uh, plot points. We just put them everywhere, very deliberately. A column on, on on every page that we can that says adventure hooks, and it just tells you 
And it's right. somebody kind of like little adventure yeah, nuggets. Somebody's got some motive for something from doing something right or wrong or sleeping with somebody or this or that. Right. And it's um, sure. kind of fits right into the immersiveness of the world. Uh, so we do have uh, maybe some recommended ones that, uh, do get people started well. And I think Trowbridge Inn, which I first said is ideal for that reason. It has both um, good source material, uh, a um, scene by scene unfolding. Um, and it is set in a manor house on a frontier with no civilization nearby. It would be real easy to use it. In it's the Ingalls, <laughs> the little house it on the prairie. Be. It the Ingalls. Uh, but so easily uh, portable into any other world or how you just just play it and don't worry about it. And then if the players actually decide they want to go from there up the road to Kaldor, well, then get Kaldor. But, you know, well, um, sure. Um, right. Because well, that's one of the reasons why I mentioned the adventures is because the, a lot of times that tends to be what pulls people into a setting is they'll pick up an adventure. Yeah. And they'll be like, hey, yeah, this adventure was kind of cool. I'd like to learn more about this game world. Yeah. And they they extend that way as opposed from going, you know, big down. They kind of go little, little up. up. Yeah. So we need probably both. And um, the we have a number of adventures. And I, I think there's a, there's a category on the website, for example, of, called adventures. And you can pull it up sure. and see them. But, sure. um, you know, it, it could be done um into the into the hardcover thing in order to help as the first impressions um and um we'll see how it all goes down i mean the, the, that's a good thought to um remember the first impression and the presentation and then adventure is something i haven't got into that format yet so i'll, I'll give it some thought yeah just like uh well because it's not a rule system but a lot of times, like when I'm reviewing a role-playing game system that comes out, if there isn't an introductory adventure in that core book, there's trouble. Oh, yeah. Because <laughs> it's like people want an adventure. They want to, they want to check out, oh, so, so what is this game world like? And then, you know, if a publisher doesn't include that. No, but of course, you're not selling a rule system. It's a it's a game setting. So there there it is different. It's a there. game setting for any now, rule one, system, right? Right. The last thing I wanted to talk about, as far as Harn goes, is the hardcover that's up on Kickstarter right now. That is that is the main focus of the Kickstarter, and isn't it clocking in over two hundred and fifty yeah, pages? Great big book. Great big book. And. Just kind of like off the top of your head, what's in that book? What's in Harn? So the book opens up with an introduction to Harn world as a concept, a role-playing world designed for gaming, and then a little bit of information about um, the culture and the, in, the the people, the section on history, a section on uh, the feudal structure that you tend to see, it's not everywhere, as I mentioned, there's a republic in some areas, but feudal structure is the main sure. thing. So we give a little explanation of that and, and how manners work and how guilds work, how cities work. These are kind of short to three, four pages what a vassal uh, is. overviews of these concepts. Um, and then sure. a broad section about history um, at a Harnic level, so the island of Harn and... and um, then it goes into a thing we call the Harn Dex, which is probably the most meaty part. So 150, 160 pages of it is Harn Dex. It's an alphabetical index of every point on the map. So the map behind me is the Harn map, which map is included in this product as well. Uh, and it it's um, got a grid on it. And so every point on the map, the castle of Galatha, say, for example, is in a grid square. And it's like like an atlas, you know, J4 or something like that. You can go and look it up. And so sure. every point on that map, and there are hundreds of them, hundreds of castles, hundreds of keeps, hundreds of um, ruins and sites and peaks and uh, a lot of things on that map. And then the book also includes more cultural details. Every, every deity, every 
one of the unique Ivashu, which is the creatures that come out of that monster factory. Those are those are mentioned in there. So everything that's kind of uniquely Harnik, plus all that religion, all the uh, the magic I mentioned, um, the, the uh, six sure. convocations of the magic are loosely the elemental planes, that kind of concept. Uh, they're explained. Um, and it goes A to Z. So there's a lot of stuff. Um, then we round it out with some information about the planet Kathira and um, its position in the other solar system and the star charts I mentioned. Um, and uh, Lithia, which is the continent that Harn is adjacent to, so that's in there too. Uh, it's its own uh, index, a little bit like the Harn Dex, like a Lithia Dex, with um, every point on that map um, detailed out um, and and more. So it's um, it's a great big tome. It's meaty and heavy, and it's going to be awesome. Um, and um, I'm excited to get it. I and mean, we proved we can do it from doing the, the recent kingdoms. And and so we're doing this. Uh, I should be here in June. If uh, That's what I was going to mention. I was just about to mention that, that the turnaround on this is going to be pretty yeah. quick, that you are indicating a delivery. Yeah, because I'll be pulling the trigger on um, on the printing in, in April, uh, maybe even a little sooner than that. I just need to close out this Kickstarter and – and do the accounting, sure. and off it goes. Because the files, the files are ready. We, we're we're prepped. We're lock and load. So um, that uh, is is unbelievable. Uh, we we're told. And if if we're a little bit late in the real world, people tend to be pretty forgiving as long as you let them know. Um, so it's. Um, right. It's been a good process to, to um, work these Kickstarters. Uh, we've been doing them for, this is 10 years. Uh, first Kickstarter was 2013 wow. for Napoleon. Uh, okay. Even then we had previously done pre-order campaigns, but, but sure, actual right. Kickstarter. Um, and we must have done 20 of them now. Uh, and I, I love it. I just love how the, the community, uh, it's real easy to get, People talking, um, they uh, uh, get some enthusiasm going, and uh, it presents our stuff in a really good light, uh, especially for for new people. And, and and like I said, that's the most important thing. I actually study the the statistics on that Kickstarter. You know, the number of people that watch the video, it's like 700 people, and then we got 600 backers. And it seems to me that's pretty phenomenal. Um, so what sure. it really suggests is I just need more people to watch that video. Right. So um, right. <laughs> the, uh, it's a good product. It's a good thing. Um, I, 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 you can tell, I'm sure that I'm proud of it and I believe in it. Uh, oh yeah. And, uh, I guarantee it too, frankly, I, you know, it's, it's family business and I would stand behind it with a personal money back guarantee on, on the stuff we sell. So you're, you're, Grant, do you have any final words you would like to share with the audience, either about the Kickstarter itself or anything else about Columbia Games? Because Harn is not, you know, the only iron in a fire you've got. Well, that is true. Uh, uh, we are working on uh, a, an overdue release of a board game called Alliance, and I am probably the most uh, important thing I do, aside from talking about uh, the the current projects is is alliance I'm, I'm working on it a little bit all the time and so is my father and we ask the the folks to be patient with that it's uh our creative process which people have known for our whole 50 years is not the fastest um but right we're, we're gonna do a good job we're gonna finish that up and it's gonna be a beautiful game uh sometime in the next few months and um so I would like to let everyone know who's thinking about backing us and, or has backed us for Alliance and, and we haven't delivered that yet, that that is still uh, on my honor going to happen and, um, and they should have full confidence in supporting us on other stuff. Um, but um, we are going to have a great year. Um, we're 
excited for Gen Con. We're excited for Harn and, and the hardbacks. Uh, I've got some Wizard King stuff in the pipeline. There's, uh, nice. there's a lot of fun things going to happen. Uh, and I'm, I'm always having fun doing what we're doing. And it's so much better that we can go out in the world and meet people. So I think that's a big part of this year too, right? Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> Yes. So you will see me at Gen Con. We've already, uh, we had talked about that off camera. Yeah. So I will uh, obviously see you there. And yeah, we'll probably talk again in front of a uh -huh. camera. I look forward to it. So Grant, thank you very much for taking some time out to uh, fill in both myself and the audience on what's going on with the Harn Kickstarter, <laughs> which I believe runs through, is it March 14th? March 14th. Is that yeah. when it runs? Got about two weeks left. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. Excellent. Yeah, have a All right, Grant, thank you very hey, much. Thank you. And a big thank you to Grant Dalglish from Columbia Games, taking time out to discuss the upcoming 40th anniversary edition of Harn World. And of course, the gaming gang is going to bring you far more coverage of Harn and other Columbia Games releases in the future. All right, that is it for this time out. If you like the video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, don't forget, ding that bell. Because not only will it let you know when I upload original videos such as this interview, it'll also inform you when my live stream, the Gaming Gang Dispatch, airs Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. Central right here on YouTube. And of course, when you're not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all latest in tabletop gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more that you won't find here on the Gaming Gang channel. Thank you very much for watching, and until I see you next time, here's hoping each and every one of you Get to enjoy plenty of great gaming with your gang. Oh, hey, you're still here. Well, that's okay. You don't have to leave just yet. In fact, why don't you subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel right here or take a peek at the latest live stream or even find out what YouTube recommends you check out from the channel. And of course, I'm Jeff McAleer. Thanks again for watching.